you for a nice introduction. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about faster satisfiability algorithms for systems of polynomial equations over finite fields. And I skip this part. So we consider systems of polynomial equations. And these have been studied for more than 300 years. Actually, um, resultant and elimination theory were used by uh, Seki and Bezu in the 18th century. So the problem has a long history. And we consider the problem called cis poly XQ, uh, which is systems of polynomial equations over GFQ. And our input is GFQ polynomials P1, P2 through Pm in formal variables x1, x2, x through xn, uh, like this. So here q is 3, and p1 is like this, and p2 is like this. And our task is to find a satisfying assignment A, that is an assignment that makes all the polynomials 0. And in this case, this assignment satisfies all the polynomials, as you can <coughs> see. And this number cis poly xq denotes the counting version of the problem. So we have to count the number of satisfying assignments. Okay. And what is known about the complexity of cis poly xq? The problem is in P, if each polynomial has degree at most one by Gaussian elimination, and the problem is NP complete if each polynomial has uh, degree at most two. And in addition, satisfying uh, this fraction of equations is NP hard on satisfiable instances, even uh, when, ah, sorry, when Q is two and degree is at most D. And the current best worst case upper bound is a uh, trivial one, Q to the N times poly of input size. And uh, this is even if Q is two and degree is at most two. So this problem looks extremely hard. And so this problem uh, is used as hardness assumption in cryptography. And there are several crypto systems assuming the hardness of um, enumerating all satisfying assignments, such as um, HFE, UOV, or Mac Ellis variants. I don't know the details of this, but uh, uh, also there are several crypto systems assuming the hardness of finding a single satisfying assignment, such as uh, Quad or uh, Matsumoto in my public key scheme, and so on. Okay. And the hardness of this problem is also used in fine-grained complexity. So strong exponential time hypothesis, that is q to the n is necessary uh, for this poly xq on degree two instances implies this, that is uh, the current best algorithm for the resting triangle uh, problem is optimal. And beating brute force for the uh, GFQ weighted K click problem is impossible. So the problem is, has been believed to uh, be very hard. And there are several previous algorithms. The most famous one is Gravener basis, which is widely used in practice, uh, but runs 
in doubly exponential time in the worst case. And um, 2 to the n times 1 minus epsilon or polynomial time algorithms for uh, this poly x2 on degree 2 instances are known if um, instances satisfy some conditions, some algebraic condi conditions. And uh, there's also a result about unsatisfiability. So Woods showed that there exists a Q to the n over 2 length proof for the unsatisfiability of this poly xq on degree 2 instances. So this means uh, there's a core non-deterministic algorithm for uh, the satisfiability of these instances. Okay. And this is our result one. We showed um, this poly xq on degree k instances can be solved in randomized time, q to the n times 1 minus 1 over order qk. And in particular, for q and k are 2, uh, this is an important case for cryptography. Uh, we get the bound of 2 to the 0 0.86, 8765 n. So this is, uh, to the best of our knowledge, the first non-trivial upper bound for the problem. Okay. And this is our second result. Uh, here, uh, Q should be a prime number, and in this case, uh, we show a number cis poly xq on degree k instances can be solved in uh, deterministic time q to the n times 1 minus 1 over order qk. So the points here are deterministic and counting and uh, prime field. And this is our third result. Uh, here, uh, we consider unbounded degree polynomials, but uh, we have to focus on GF2. And let S be the total number of monomials. Then uh, the number cis poly x2 can be solved in deterministic time, 2 to the n times 1 minus 1 over order log s over n. And this uh, running time is exponentially faster than 2 to the n if uh, s is order n. And this is our fourth result. Uh, here we consider um, more general uh, problem. So we consider uh, so-called um, sigma pi sigma circuits. Uh, that is uh, sum of products of linear forms um, like this. So each polynomial is represented as a sum of products of, li products of linear forms. Okay. And uh, again, we show that uh, uh, if S is the total number of products of linear forms, then uh, this problem can be solved in deterministic time uh, like this. This is uh, the same expression in the previous uh, result. And so, uh, we show uh, this is exponentially faster than 2 to the n if s is order n. Okay. And I would like to remark that um, KCNF sat 
is a special case of cis poly x2 on degree k instances. So uh, you can see uh, these three clauses can be represented as polynomials. And uh, the condition that these clauses are satisfied uh, is equivalent to the conditions these polynomials are uh, simultaneously zero. Okay. And this uh, connection explains the optimality of our results. So we show uh, cis poly x2 on degree k instances can be solved in time uh, of this form. And the, it is known that KCNF sat can be solved in time two to the n times one minus one over k. So if we would like to improve the dependency on k, uh, a k here, we must improve uh, the upper bound for KCNF sat. Okay. And as for this result, uh, here we consider a uh, uh, sigma pi sigma circuit, and S is the total number of products of linear forms. And we get the running time of the form like this. And as for CNF sat, uh, if we set S is the number of clauses, then uh, it is known that CNF sat can be solved in time, 2 to the n times 1 minus 1 over 2 log s over n. So again, uh, if we would like to improve this part, then uh, we also have to improve this part for CNF sat. And this is a summary of our techniques. So our algorithm is based on the so-called polynomial method in circuit complexity, which is originally used for uh, proving circuit size lower bounds. And we use extensions of uh, fast evaluation algorithms for polynomials due to Yates and other peoples. And uh, approximation of polynomials by low degree probabilistic polynomials due to Razborov and Smolensky. And it's the randomization version due to Chan and Williams. And we also use extensions of uh, so called Schurz with this reduction for CNF SAT. Okay. So what is the polynomial method? Um, so um, we call that an AC0Q circuit is a bounded dips, a bounded fine Boolean circuit with end or not and modulo Q gates. And Razborov and Smolensky uh, showed the following circuit lower bounds. So they showed first um, AC0Q circuit can be well approximated by a low degree GFQ polynomial. And second, they showed majority and modular R functions can't be well approximated by a low degree GFQ polynomial. So combining these two, and they showed these majority and modular R functions can't be computed by AC0Q circuits. And it turns out that uh, this item one is useful in algorithm design. And actually, we use it. Okay. So let me uh, briefly explain our algorithms by a polynomial method. Okay. And in what follows, 
we focus on GF2. Um, this is our tool number one. Um, here, let P be a GF2 polynomial represented as a sum of monomials. Then, the truth table of P can be generated in time poly of n times two to the n. And this result is non-trivial because the number of monomials in P can be uh, two to the n. So if we evaluate P of x for each x, then it takes uh, poly of n times four to the n. This is the basic idea of our algorithm. Our input is degree k polynomials. And we define a polynomial p as a product of uh, p1 plus 1 uh, through pm plus 1. Then uh, you can see uh, all of these polynomials uh, zero if and only if p of x is one. And uh, you can also see that uh, p might contain two to the n number of uh, monomials when it is represented as a sum of monomials because uh, this uh, is a degree n polynomials. <laughs> And next, we define a function R as a product of P of Ya plus 1 uh, over all assignment A in 0, 1 to the n prime for some appropriately chosen n prime. And then uh, you can see that um, there exists some x such that P of x is 1 if and only if there exists some y such that R of y is zero. And here, each uh, polynomial P, Y, A might contain two to the n minus n prime monomials. But uh, for now, we ignore these numbers, then we can observe that um, if we can write uh, this Ry function as a sum of monomials in time two to the n minus n prime, then we can also solve the uh, problem in time poly of n times two to the n minus n prime by using the first evaluation lemma because this function is a polynomial in n minus n prime variables. But uh, unfortunately, um, if we expansion this Ry into a uh, sum of monomials into a uh, straightforward formula, then it might take uh, time two to the n. So we need some um, additional idea. Okay. And this is our tool number two. And let me define some function Q for S1 through SD in 0, 1 to the n. We define degree D polynomial Q as this. And here, uh, this, bra this bracket means uh, the inner product of Si and X. And our intuition is um, this Q function approximates a product of Xy plus one over uh, I in N. And actually, as the borough and the small and ski, 
show that uh, if we select random S1 through SD uniformly and independently, then for every non-zero x, uh, the probability that uh, Q of x is zero is one over minus two to the minus <coughs> two. So if we set D sufficiently large, then uh, this Q function approximates uh, this product uh, with high probability. And uh, it is easy to see that Q of zero is always one. And now I can explain our algorithm for degree k instances. So we define p and r as before. And then we replace each product. So a uh, product like this or a product here by a probabilistic polynomial and write uh, this R as a sum of monomials P. And then we construct the true stable of T of P using the first evaluation algorithm. And if T contains an entry with zero, then the input has a solution. And to reduce the error probability, we repeat steps three and four uh, sufficiently many times and take the majority voting of uh, many t's. Okay. And to analyze the running time, the most important part is here, but um, this step takes only time poly of n times two to the n minus n prime for appropriately chosen n prime. If uh, we replace each product uh, by uh, sufficiently low degree polynomial. I don't show the calculation, but uh, this is enough to get the bound here. Okay, uh, so uh, from this algorithm, we get uh, our result one. And to de-randomize this algorithm, we need some additional ideas. So um, first we use uh, de-randomization probabilistic polynomials due to uh, Razborov and Smolensky by Chand Williams. And their idea is uh, based on uh, so-called small biased space and modulus amplifying polynomial. And we also use some fast evaluation algorithms for non-multilinear integer polynomials. And this algorithm is based on the first rectangular matrix multiplication. Uh, but uh, I skip the details of these. Okay. And now I would like to explain our algorithm for unbounded degree instances. And here, um, we introduce some procedure called degree reduction. And this procedure generates exponentially many instances of cis poly x2, such that um, the original input has a solution if and only if, at least, one of generated instances has a solution. And second, um, all generated instances have degree at most k. So now we can apply the 
algorithm for degree gain in instances. And what we do in degree deduction, it's a fairly simple idea. So while there is a monomial of degree more than k, such as a product of x1 through xn, and then we generate two instances, i1 and i2, by setting uh, this x1 through xk, product of x1 through xk is 1 or 0. And uh, in the first case, this implies uh, this. And in the second instance, we just add this uh, as a new polynomial equation. And in general, uh, we can extend this procedure for uh, sigma pi sigma circuits by using some simplification rules based on change of basis. But uh, I will skip this part. Okay. So let me conclude. These are our results. So first, we showed that cis poly XQ on degree k instances can be solved in randomized time of this. And if q is a prime number, we get a deterministic algorithm for the counting version of the problem. And if q is 2, then we can uh, handle more general problems. So each polynomial has unbounded degree, and actually each monomial is a product of linear forms. Okay. And these results are, in some sense, optimal uh, because improvement requires that for CNF SAT and KCNF SAT. Okay. And there are several interesting future directions. So, uh, first, we would like to obtain similar running time in polynomial space because our algorithm uses exponential space and uh, for applications, it's not desirable. And um, we can only show that degree reduction works for uh, the case Q is 2. So we would like to extend this to the case Q is not equal to. Uh, the, um, also, we would like to beat brute force search algorithm for other problems using the polynomial method. And the last one is to develop or apply first evaluation algorithms for more ex expressive classes than polynomials, such as uh, constant deep circuits or formula, and uh, obtain some uh, new interesting algorithms. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, there was some very heavy machinery. Questions, comments? Right. Uh, can you, what would be your target class? Like, how would you generalize polynomials? Like, what do you expect the next fast evaluation algorithm to be about? Uh, actually, there are some results about dips to symmetric circuits or threshold circuits. So maybe you can apply them for some related problems. Oh, I'm on your first slide. You have polycracker crypto system. Mm -hmm. And I was curious how 
I've noticed more and more references to that. I just wondered how, if you see it as becoming more and more important. The reason I'm curious is because Mike was and Neil Koblitz were the originators of Polycracker, so it's always been oh. in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know the details, but yeah, <laughs> it's nice to know. Okay, then let's uh, thank the speaker again.